Animal welfare really began in 1824 in England when one of my personal heroes, uh, a man called William Wilberforce, who was one of the leaders in the campaign to abolish slavery throughout the British Empire and uh, slave trade uh, beyond it. And also uh, he, he campaigned against uh, child labor in factories and got the Factory Act passed. A, a, a major figure in, uh, in making uh, Victorian Britain much more civilized. He also turned his attention to cruelty to animals. England had had it before, before uh, the States did. But um, an aristocrat, Henry Burton, I think his name was, in 1866, saw the uh, horses being the ASPCA started then, and he got uh, laws enacted. It was in the late 1800s, actually, and a woman was listening to uh, a mother who continually abused her daughter in another apartment day after day, week after week, and she had called the police tried every avenue she could to help that little girl. There were no laws covering the abuse of children, your own children. And they invoked the ASPCA ruling, the uh, Society of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and applied that to children, and then they passed. First child abuse case um, was brought to court by the SPCA, and so um, I think we're probably um, animal welfare and that is um, on the animal welfare side people believe that it is appropriate for people to utilize people and animals at least in some categories are equal and that people should not use animals for any purpose. An animal welfareist would say well I don't like animal testing but if you're going to do it um, you should make sure the animal doesn't suffer. Okay an animal rights person would say screw you you have no right to invade and abuse an animal to gain any of this information unless that animal willingly jumps be allowed to, 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 to live. They're not half life when they don't have a family. Well, let me tell you, they have a family. These are all our kids. And the problem between animal welfare people is, don't you dare tell me we don't get along because we all have different ideas on how to raise our kids. <laughs> In terms of how animals are treated in Hollywood. In the large respect, they are treated better than the actors. With uh, Brunswick Mountain, there was uh, all people saying, you know, one side saying, you know, the sheeps were put up in hotel suites. The other side saying the sheeps were a you university know, that will immediately crop up should anything go wrong. In essence, it's replaced the duty of care of man towards the animal with the idea that animals are mopping uh, cruelty to humans are also justified in stopping cruelty to animals. with such a warrant, one should, one should watch out. There, there you have immediately the incubation. And whose propaganda is by deed, not by argument. Case in point, Dr. Jerry Vlasic, practicing trauma surgeon in Law Rights Group. I said, listen, I think that tactically, if you were to take animal experimenters, and if you were to ask them to stop experimenting on animals, but if they didn't, and if you explain to them why they should, and they still didn't, and you told them to stop, and they still didn't, that if you stopped them physically, whether you killed them or otherwise stopped them, then I think that you wouldn't have, and I think the quote goes something like, you wouldn't have to kill more than 10 or 15 of these animal uh, abusing research scientists to get a lot of people to start thinking about, do I really want to do animal research? How many doctors have chosen, hey man, don't kick my dog. And the guy says, oh, you know, he weighs 200 pounds and he's a weightlifter and he says, I'm going to kick your dog if I want to kick your dog. Then I think most people would say that you would have the right to stop him from kicking your dog. If you had to hit him with a two by four or, or something, then that would be certainly morally justifiable. And so I'm just using whatever means are necessary. I think that's a morally defensible argument. These labs, these fur farms, these factory farms, these stores, they weren't built for any other purpose than to kill animals and to market an impression and, and market oppression and to profit from the misery. It is simple. Plastic is so you put it in sponge, which is soaked also with flammable liquid, and they couldn't find an incense stick, but this represents that. You put the incense stick in here, you light it, you place it. Underneath the weapon of mass destruction, you light the incense stick. 
But even when you go into a store and you see as this product was not tested on animals, uh, what, that, what that really means is that that product specifically wasn't tested on animals, but every ingredient... Bacteria that are found in the kept very neat, very small man, non-threatening, um, because again, tax dollars at work, if that man's a threat, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Up Huntington Animal Cruelty USA for the past few years before I had to resign because of this current indictment. And Josh and I and five others are currently under federal indictment. Charges that we feel are very constitutionally flawed and charges. Uh, my name is Josh. Uh, <laughs> I grew up and lived kind of in the heart of the Willamette Valley. And so I was surrounded on all sides by and basically having the contact um, that I had with animals and um, with natural beauty made me want to fight very hard to protect it. So from the time I cited terrorists. <laughs> Look, the Shack movement is, is very interesting just because it's, it's so violent and so disturbing. Sort of a special interest subset of the animal liberation front. Don't ask for animal liberation. Just take it. It's very much like the abortion movement. You know, they had it in their home addresses and then, you know, all kinds of horrible statements about what these people that testing medicines and, and new drug therapies on animals is so wrong that you literally have to beat up the people who are involved in the work. I turned uh, to find three individuals with, with balaclavas and, and what certainly looked like pickaxe handles or something of that nature uh, and, and a very nasty gash on the head. Activism in this country, the violent side of animal activism, really took a turn for the worse with the shack movement. And if somebody doesn't put a stop to it, either with new laws or with some effective prosecutions, it's just a matter of time before the whole movement starts to say, hey, who cares what's right or wrong? Let's look at what works. The states are making it illegal and dangerous to demonstrate lawfully. People are going to go 